What's going on, everybody? It's episode 35 of the Main Stand Podcast. We're, we're coming in hot this week, honestly. We got the Care About Cups uh, up in the windows. Pat's giving a shit for it, um, saying that, you know, City are going to win the treble. Uh, this is me and Mitch's silverware right now, and we're going to add more to our screens by the end of this season. I'm very the tit- The title race is on across all fronts right now. We've got semifinal after semifinal. It is it is heating up. The Premier League is coming to an end here in just a couple of months. So we shall see how this all unfolds. Ton of great stuff. We had the penultimate match this past weekend. Liverpool City finished 2-2. Pretty gentlemanly affair for two top clubs, I would I would say. Bass had a pretty fitting meme that he kept sending Pat and I just Liverpool and city fans making out for the next <laughs> I year know that as well. Um, I, I appreciate it though. Like it, it means something when people recognize that, you know, these two massive clubs are facing off and we respect each other at, at the same time while we're clawing it out for three different trophies right now. Yeah. But it was a good game of football. Um, uh, my main takeaways are, you know what? Still a point ahead. So you're still chasing. Uh, you have a definitely have a tougher run in these last eight games. Um, you have United 100%. coming up. You have United coming up. And I, I think the only real challenge is Spurs. And that's if they keep this form up and then also don't roll over against you like they love to do for whatever reason. But they're playing fair, good ball. Everton, Everton and Newcastle aren't easy games either. Yeah, but you host Newcastle, don't you? Um, possibly. Still, I, they're still playing really good. And Everton, it's a derby. You got to throw everything out the window. Yeah, that's and they they have something to play for too. Yep. So yeah. you guys have the tougher run in. I think City have Wolves, and we go away to Brighton. Maybe are the only two like questionable ones. But yeah, Villa. Yeah, but we're home. We're at home, and they suck. We're gonna kick the shit out of them. We actually have Mitch. We have Wolves on the last day of the season. That's our last game. We do. Yeah. So that's another. That's another tough, tough match. They play a physical brand of football, and I don't know. I the the nerves are still pretty high, but definitely at a more mellow, kind of realistic, trying to figure out all the possibilities, all the scenarios that are coming our way but also just kind of want to enjoy it while it's happening. I'm, I'm honestly, it's crazy to say this, but like af- after the full 90 of, of that absolutely thrilling game of ball, it, it feels like two points lost for City. And, and I don't know, maybe yeah. you guys feel the same way, but I, City should have won that game. Uh, you know, missed chances in front of goal, really. I, I just hope they don't come to reg- like miss out on the title mm-hmm. by – like a four point swing or like you win by a point or something like that. Like that game would have been the differentiator. Um, Sterling offside by a nut hair. It, it's in the rules of the game. He was offside. So yeah. all is fair, but that was just really sad to have happen and probably should have scored a couple more, but overall I felt good about the game. Uh, Ederson's a fucking psycho. <laughs> the, 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 the cock on that guy to then post, on his Instagram, the the goal line picture with just a funny. thumbs up emoji. Yeah, just kick the ground a little more often, and we'll be all all set. <laughs> Mitch, um, you can agree with this. Uh, I think Pat is kind of we just like reversed roles from the the reverse fixture earlier in the year where we had two leads and kind of gave it up, and it almost felt like two points lost for us. I think you probably feel that way now, Pat. Um, like you said, I think City were the better team, and I think we kind Absolutely. of left it uh, happy with a point, honestly. And that's – I know we have a harder run in, and City still have the advantage, still are in the better spot in my opinion, but I'm fine with a point um, considering, you know, how many chances City did have in front of net. Yeah. yeah. And, it, I mean, there were there were kind of glaring issues all over our, our, uh, our team. Obviously, Trent is – kind of the conversation right now uh defensive disaster class um he'll evolve did it did did his offensive thing um but you know 
and then missed chances for us as well, just kind of lacking that forward uh, drive to go go at the net and really attack it. We didn't really have um, Mo got smothered, kind of still off the pace. Um, a lot of things that are kind of moving right now, and I think there's a lot of attention on both sides. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of tired legs, so um, to get 90 minutes out, nobody injured after that fixture, I'll take a I'll take a point gladly. It must be nice to not have any injuries right now. I, last last couple things I, I, I'm going to say at least from a from my perspective, and you guys will definitely chime in on one of them. Um, De Bruyne, a man of the match, 100. Yeah. Uh, percent yep. unbelievable game from him. Uh, let down by the forwards, in all honesty, which is unfortunate, but he was doing everything in his power. To, to win us that game uh that ball he played through for Mares in like the 92nd minute like running on fumes to, to be able to play a ball like that is uh is next level honestly and uh, I thought Jesus played well really well or played really well too he did uh, I was it was good to see him get some game time and uh somebody called him like a reverse stat patter on Twitter because he only plays well in big games yeah. and uh I thought that was pretty funny um my last thing, and you guys say what you want about this. I'm just going to stop talking after. I think you were a little, a little fortunate to end that game with uh, all 11 players on the yeah. pitch. Yeah. Uh, I think that tackle on, I think it was Fabinho on De Bruyne, the studs up one that ended up being a yellow card. We've seen Pogba get sent off for a really, really similar challenge. On uh, Nabby, yeah. For that one. Um, and then I don't, um, maybe you guys josh because mitch and i were watching the game together that foul they called on de bruyne when tiago was already on a yellow yeah, he and got it looked... that wrong but i believe it was i know exactly which one you're talking about yeah. sorry for yeah. interrupting what happened but that looked as clear as day that tiago kicked through him it was i think if i remember correctly i think there was a call like 30 seconds prior that the ref missed really bad the other way and i think that might have been almost like a makeup thing it was definitely clear from mine. I don't think it was like really a card, but it definitely wasn't a foul on De Bruyne. I thought he did get that one wrong. There was a few questionable calls, like right in that little period, but I think there was even call, like even mistakes for both sides. Yeah, it was a decently refereed game. Yeah. In all honesty, <laughs> it was it was unfortunate that there's like those little little moments. Uh, but Pat, two things for yeah. you. Like I mentioned the midfield and the build up and everything and how like Liverpool's midfield with Fab, Hendo and Thiago was going to be really good. I thought Fabinho really struggled to kind of get into the game. I thought like every touch he had, there was a city player right on him and he really just didn't have space to turn. Every ball he played was kind of back to Allison or, you know, the two center backs. And I feel like when he did try to turn, he, he lost it quite a bit. Did you, um, you know, did city capitalize on that? Did you think Fabinho had a bad game as well? Yeah, I did. I, I think Fabinho and Trent specifically, I did not think were particularly good in that game. I think City, honestly, I, I you know, I'm, I'm maybe it's talking shit, but I did. I think City were spinning Fabinho all day long. Yeah. I, I don't think he had a particularly good game at all. I think at the end of 90 minutes, he was arguably your worst player on the pitch. Yeah, kind of a rare one from him too, because he's usually one you can count on. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that I, I really thought Liverpool could have done differently and I, I mentioned this in the build-up as well um, but I really think we kind of saw it kind of come to life I think Firmino could have made a difference in that game um, if he was brought on a little bit earlier or just you know started outright I think his movement could have done a little bit more to just link up the play because um, you know aside from a couple chances we weren't like overly pressing you um, we could still you know pick you out at any given moment but it, it wasn't mm -hmm. like constant pressure and attack. And I think Firmino could have helped kind of uh, build that up to make a little bit more of a sustained attack at times. Yeah, definitely agree. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Firmino start this weekend. So maybe we'll yep. see a little bit of that on Saturday. Um, Going to be a really fun next eight weeks, fellas. Really fun next eight weeks. Can't take it, man. All right. um, outside of, uh, you know, what was the biggest match of the weekend, there's a couple other games just to – touch quickly on here um everton with a huge win against man united burnley losing to everton too um maybe they're not getting relegated they're so back and forth but i, I don't know i think the win against man united is really going to spur them on and 
with Burnley losing to to Norwich as well, uh, I, I think I think Everton are just going to barely manage to stay up, and Sean Dyche is finally going to fuck off. Yeah. Burnley have West Ham this weekend as well. I'm not quite sure who Everton has. Um. Uh, I think Everton are safe. That Norwich result was huge. Um, and for them to get that three points against Man United, who are you know, obviously not where they used to be, but a top side, um, mm-hmm. that puts them in a very good position. And I think me and you, Pat, have always said that Everton have enough individual talent that they were never going to get relegated. It was always going to be kind of close, but um, never quite within reality. Um, and I think they were starting to see that kind of in the last few games. Yeah, something that... Uh, you know, moving on from from the Ev, uh, but something I have been speaking into existence that's feeling less and less likely. Um, Arsenal uh, are just fucking blowing it, man. They're just it's coming apart at the seams. They had everything in their hands. They had like two games in hand, and they're just losing games. And it's uh, it's a little unfortunate to see at least for me, somebody who really would like to see Arsenal back in the top four. Yeah, I think I think it really boils down to the lack of depth right now. Um, injury bugs plagued them at the wrong time. The, the run of games have been playing, just bad injuries, bad timing, and now it's kind of reset and look on to what we can do next season at this point. Um, but we still have two more months of football. There's a lot that can change. And uh, we'll see what we'll see what happens with Arsenal, but I wouldn't count them out just yet. It's it, it does hurt to see uh, the struggles uh, as of late. It's just looking tough for them. They're three yeah. points back on Tottenham with a game in hand, but even if they match the results with Tottenham for the rest of the season, they need a ten goal swing to yeah. overtake Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, just one goal difference for top four, so. I think it's going to be really tough, especially with the way Tottenham have been playing. Um, yeah. It feels like Conte has found a really good, like he's got that team finally in a place where um, they they really can go on and, and get this top four spot. Um, great segue into the next game. Uh, you know, Tottenham cruising under Conte. Yeah. Uh, Josh, Mitch, what do you what do you guys think of that? How you feeling about Tottenham's chances of making the top four? You think they're going to hold on? You think Arsenal are going to catch up? What's think, uh, what's the vibe? I think they're very good, honestly. Um, I've kind of favored Tottenham the last few weeks. I would say, obviously, they were having you know an extremely volatile run of form or a lot of like win loss win loss results. Now they're starting to put some wins together. Kane looks solid. Um, Hyunmin Son is just as class as ever. Uh, one of the best forwards in the premier league and i don't think he gets talked about quite enough and then kulisevsky just coming into this tottenham side and Mm. looks like he's been in the premier league for five years uh what a signing man honestly what a signing he's been unbelievable it's hard to do for foreign players too it's like hard for them to adjust to the speed of the premier league everything like that you see um you know players around the league take months to get integrated into a team like that especially under a leader like conte where he wants you to play a certain way Kulisevsky has come into that team and done absolute wonders for their offense. Just hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think he's been phenomenal. Um, another note about the Spurs front three. I was talking to Mitch about this the other day, and I think it's hysterical that uh, Kane is about to take half a season off and still probably end with 20 goals and 10 assists. Crazy. He has just absolutely showed up the second half of the season. Uh Tottenham turned the, sh- the ship around and I mean it's pretty evident with the uh, the results they've been getting. You think uh, no, oh, sorry Mitch, not to cut you off yeah, No, 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 you're good. Oh, I was just going to say, you think with Champions League football on the horizon for them, if they make top four and they get back into the UCL, uh, do you think Kane pushes for a move again this summer or do you think he finally settles down and says, you know what Tottenham is my home I would probably say he settles down especially with the addition of an attack partner um, who has already been producing pretty well with him and and son on the other side. Um, I think it's bolstered a a new confidence into this first side. So, I mean, if he's able to chase the bag and stay where he is and, and keep producing, I mean, he's got a golden boot in him or at least in the, in the race for one every year. 
Mm-hmm. So why why not be a staple? Why not cement yourself as one of the greats and keep doing what you're doing at the club that made you? But can you cement yourself as one of the greats without winning a trophy? Is the question. Yep. They have the ability to go out and do that. They've added pieces. They have a manager that has a track record of winning games and has European experience. So why uh, why not? Why not yeah. trust it with the side that you have? You have a world class left wing on on your on your left, and you have a, a new signing that's fit in well. Your midfield's jiving. Your your back line's okay, and you've got a pretty solid keeper in net. You got six guaranteed points against City every season. Exactly. I think Spurs peaked in 2019, to be completely honest. I, I don't see them getting back to, like, a, a serious title contending side. I think we all know what's going to happen with Conte. Um, and that's – he's going to get to the summer. Uh, they're going to get to top four finish. Champions League football is going to be optimistic. And then Daniel Levy is still not going to cut the checks. Um, and that's going to, you know, infuriate Antonio Conte and – I don't think that relationship will last very long, if I'm being 100% honest, um, which is why I th- still think that Kane probably has a, a move on his mind because he's been there long enough to see the class coaches they've had come in and out, and they're never really backed. I mean, they have a, a still a stadium to pay for. Um, I, I just don't see them, you know, writing checks like, like Kane will want them to. Um, so I, I think he'll actually move on this summer. It's fair. I think it's interesting to see that. One more thing on the Arsenal stuff, too, before we get too far away from top four. Mitch brought up depth. Uh, one name we haven't saw in a while, um, Tommy Yasu, on the outside of defense. Remember those betting allegations that got brought up and we all thought it was Xhaka? I saw this on Twitter the other day, too. I saw it, it on Twitter as well. Actually him. And that's why he hasn't been in the side. Yeah, that they could keep it quiet. And that has happened before players, you know, go to rehab. I'm not, trust me, I'm not like, you know, saying this is a fact. It's just a possibility. Um, But we saw players go to rehab and things like that. And it's been really kind of kept quiet. He could have just been suspended, you know, or, you know, punished this whole time. We don't really know. But a lot of people have brought that up, that it's a very fishy, that he's just been on the, you know, just kind of on the outskirts of the team for, for so long. Yeah, that is funny. That 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 is funny to think about. Um, you guys, want to, is there anything else you guys want to talk about in England, or do you want to talk about the fucking absurd week in Europe that we had? Yeah, let's go to Champions League. Let's, Besides let's Southampton getting uh, pumped, which is their usual uh, more than five goals getting beat game. <laughs> yeah, it's annual at this point. But it's I love we it. can start putting bets on it next year for who's <laughs> going to do it to them. dive right into the champions league which game do you guys yeah. want to start out with we'll talk let's you guys want to talk about our team's last because there were some yeah yeah pretty let's talk villarreal Bayern. yeah dude um that was nuts that was insane like hats off to villarreal man that's all you can do is applaud what Ooh, a Emery. what a or, you know Emery in europe man for real what a performance out of them um, the uh, when when Lewandowski scored that goal for Bayern, I was like, "All right, here it comes like, here comes three, here comes four, like they're gonna just start yeah. pouring in." And the credit to Villarreal for the response they had from Bayern's goal, they conceded one, and they really just shirt up the back and and um, I am not I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation <laughs> of uh, the last name of this guy, and some dude's gonna call me an idiot in our in our Instagram comments again, Chukawazi. Yeah, something like something like similar. He he came on and he wrote himself into Champions League folklore with that goal. Uh, he could have had an assist like moments earlier too, and then he went on and scored the game winner, so made it up for him or you're the tie winner, I should say, but you know made up for it in that way. And yeah. just can't praise the you know the fortitude from Villarreal enough over the last two games that they played, knocking Juventus out, having that also have to go to a game away from home against a European giant winning convincingly in Turin and then yeah. rocking up the Allianz against Bayern Munich and doing what they had to do to, to get through the next round. Uh, they're defensively solid. Their midfield's good. They have a press. They're super, super organized out of possession and they're going to try to kill you on the counterattack. I'm, 
I favor Liverpool in the next leg uh, or in the next round. I'll be totally honest. I don't, I don't see the fairy tale of uh, Villarreal getting to a Champions League final, but I'll be rooting for it. You know, Bayern really didn't look that impressive in this game, and that's to no. take nothing away from Villarreal. Um, I thought Unai Emery was great. Thought he was very disrespected at Arsenal. Obviously, uh, you know, won the Europa League last year. Um, beat Jurgen Klopp with Sevilla back in the Europa League final in what was that match 2017? Um, yes, would have been yeah back then. I was I think in high school might have been 2016. Um, we know he's a good coach. Villarreal have a good track record, but Bayern just played uninspiring ball. Man, they didn't look impressive whatsoever, and they really haven't the past few months. Yeah, I, yeah, and I, I think. You know, Villarreal just capitalized on the kind of I think the lax attitude. I didn't I didn't see the flashes of Muller and Lewandowski that we see on a regular basis. We we didn't see Lewandowski in the running for the Ballon d'Or. We we saw flat Bayern Munich who had trouble playing their game. Villarreal made it extremely difficult for them, and and there's a reason that they've made it this far into the the semifinals, and they they have to work their asses off for it. Una Emery has put together a game plan to to take down one of the the biggest clubs in world football, and and essentially take all of their their wind out of their sails. You know, you don't have production out of one of the most prolific goal scorers in the in the game today and now you're sent home early yeah wild result and definitely not one anyone was expecting um like like pat said we can get into our teams um kind of last here but we will hop over to the other side of the bracket which is real madrid chelsea um just a thrilling game of football chelsea with the outrageous comeback Marco Alonso unlucky handball, and then Benzema finishing it off uh, in extra time. What would you guys make of it? Uh, Benzema is inevitable, and I don't think that was a handball. Yeah, it's harsh. Nah, it's well, very, the, very harsh. According to, like, the new laws of the game, it is a handball yes. because it, it it's, like, the yeah. new rule that, like, if a ball hits any part of your arm and then directly after leads to a goal – it's considered a handball, but it's like pretty harsh that it bounced up <coughs> off of him. And it wasn't like it really set him up for anything. It'd be the same thing if it had come off like his midriff or so, or, or anywhere else. It just happened to hit him like in the wrist, like hand area coming up off his foot. And then, you know, he hit it on the half volley. Good strike, but yeah, it's unfortunate that it had to, had to happen like that. Um, Modric though, holy shit. Assist of the year, unbelievable ball into Benzema. Yeah, unbelievable game. Yeah, all it, in all. the whole like, thing, phenomenal. Um, I I was honestly surprised. I had counted Chelsea out completely. Me I too. Figured it was, I, I figured it was done and dusted. Um, but credit to Real Madrid to to hold on and maintain some some semblance of control. The gives me a little James on the outside was a fun one to watch uh, over that two legs. Yeah, the the respect that those two have for each other was was funny to see. Yeah, it does it does give me some confidence. However, seeing Chelsea being able to go to Real Madrid and score three, um, I, I think that does bode well for City and the, the next leg of this. Um, my my, I'm, I'm staking my claim now. You're seeing City in the Champions League final again this year. Yeah, I mean, so Pat, why don't you just go into your game against Athletic? Then? Why do you think um, that, sir? Holy fucking shit! This game was a doozy. Um, start with the football, and then we'll talk about the theatrics afterwards. Um, pretty boring first half. City didn't capitalize on many of the chances that they made. Felt pretty on top, so you know you're, I was confident going into the second half, and then uh, all hell broke loose, and Atletico put us uh, under pressure for 45 straight minutes. They came out, completely changed their game plan. They really started shit housing um, every tackle they went in with the intent to murder someone, 
Um, injury to De Bruyne, injury to Kyle Walker late in the second half. Um, and then Savage, who fucking rat, used to be a city player. Um, Foden gets a, a little swipe from Felipe and then goes over and Savage tries to like yank him off the pitch all fucking hell breaks loose. Um, there's a really funny clip of Jack Grealish tapping, like walking up to Savage when he's talking to John Stones, kind of tapping him on the shoulder and go. And I, I love accents. You can very clearly yeah. like, and just in the, his his brummy English accent just goes, "Oi, you're a cunt," and just <laughs> hundred million dollars repaid right there. But. Uh, Dude, City out shit housed Atletico at their at their own place. So uh, I think as ugly as that was, and as bad of a half of football as that was from City two years ago, if City are put under that kind of pressure at a Champions League quarterfinal, they fold hundred percent. They lose that game. City, the Centurions, that hundred point City team did not have the mental fortitude that this current city side do to go under pressure like that. And and we saw that firsthand when Liverpool steamrolled us in the quarterfinals of the Champions League that year. And then, you know, similarly in, in the next year when they lost to Lyon in the quarterfinals too, um, this, this city team is different. They, they're, they know what they can do. They, they know how to defend and then they're organized. They're calm. They know what they have to do to see games out. And that's what they did. And I thought it was a, a really assured defensive performance from City. And roll on the semifinals. Uh, Pat, and final you... note, fun stat, real quick, fun stat for it. John Stones is the first English center back to ever win man of the match beyond the round of 16 in the Champions League. Not like Rio or anyone like that? That's surprising. I ever. would have thought Rio would have ever. Uh... Ever. First English center back to ever win. That's impressive. Made the match award passed the round of 16 of the Champions League. That is impressive. Jonathan Boulder, baby. I have, a, I have a quote to read you, Pat. I'm not sure if you saw it um, from Atletico's president, Enrique Cerezo. Oh, fuck it. I, I read this. Fuck him. Can I read it out loud for Mitchell? Yeah, you can, but fuck him. Let me hear it. We're a team with too much class for someone to offend us. And at the end, it's been shown that everyone has their prehistory. We played a good game attacking. And City yesterday played prehistory defensively and put a wall in front of their goal so they wouldn't be scored on. Coming from the guy whose team <laughs> stuck in a 0 5 5 when he came to the Etihad to play damage control. I fucking hate him, dude. Atletico are rats. I will say their home support is un- incredible, even when oh, they're losing. Even, it was I, unreal. Not, Simi- yeah, Simeone was flipping out on the uh on the touchline begging for uh begging for fans to get loud and they obliged him yeah uh it was it was it was a fracas what what more is there to say they Go were uh dipping his water laughing at him while he was yelling at the fans grill i think the best part for me was the initial charge in on savage just like the look in his face the pure like death stare because he just he he was just, just there was one path get the fuck out of the way yep. and then uh and then when he turns around and grabs Grealish by a fistful of his hair and just starts yanking him around that was fucking hilarious like all like all bad things aside like obviously this shouldn't be a thing it shouldn't escalate to this where it's going down the tunnel but that that was funny as shit. I thought Grealish was fucking hilarious, dude. We paid $100 million for a dude to, that's got two league assists, and he just called Savage a gun. We have a 19-year-old that will do it for us. <laughs> and we and we didn't pay $100 million for him. Yeah, your 19-year-old's not the ambassador for Google, you know, all right? That so. comment he left the other day, it was actually probably a couple weeks ago. Um, someone had commented something about how many goals he has in the league versus how many girlfriends he's had this year. And it was Same a Man United fan. And he just destroyed them, and it was hilarious. Uh, but Yeah, that was last month. We'll move on um, to Liverpool. 3-3 with Benfica. They advanced 6-4 on aggregate. Never really a game just because the game always felt kind of out of reach for Benfica, especially when it was 6-2 Liverpool. 
like 30 yeah. minutes to go and there wasn't much in it it was a very rotated side from Klopp did, did Seven you take changes. anything bad away from that Mitch or is that just kind of a, a passover game for you I, th- I I don't necessarily think it's a passover game I think it's extremely important moving into this stretch of you know three games in the next what is it 10 days 12 days you have Mo Salah having a half an hour you have um a, a fully rotated side you have Simi Cass in the left uh you have um Joe Gomez playing right back and and then you have Matip who hasn't really played in the last few weeks getting some warm legs fresh legs for the upcoming few games that I'm sure we'll see him featured in um and then you had Ibu Kanate uh we had a rotated midfield and then we had kind of an interesting front three pairing with Luis Diaz on the right side so it was I think a little bit indicative of what we're trying to do who we're trying to rest and what we're trying to achieve in the next three competitions because we're playing three games in three different competitions so it's it's difficult it's challenging and we need to we need to rest rest guys when we can yeah. not worried at all that you shipped three at home no not, not really, really. That's how rotated you were no, Pat, because, uh, you know, two goals, they had to go to VAR to review because they were so close on offsides. I think with Van Dyke controlling that high line, those goals don't happen. Um, yeah, right. I, th- I think they were both called off on Joe. Yeah, I mean, Joe was definitely a weak link. I think with that normal, you know, starting 11 in there that doesn't happen again with Van Dyke's just organization and how much he'll fucking give you a hair dryer if you get it wrong. I just don't see that happening. Motip isn't necessarily, like, the leader of that group. Um, so right. I think Allison was almost the leader of defense in that game. That's really not his responsibility. So at the end of the day, not too worried. Darwin Nunez uh, looks class. What a goal. Looks like a great player. Um, mm-hmm. Scored a couple goals over those two Everton Everton looked good as well. Yeah. I'm not really that impressed by Everton. He, just another Brazilian winger that kind of I don't think is going to be that great. Um, the name for Josh. He's just <laughs> fucking angry at the name. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I don't think he's going to be that good. Um, Simikas, fucking unreal performance. Unreal that we have that good of a, a backup left back. Uh, just can come into any game and whip two assists in. Just up and down the field the entire 90 minutes. Happy for Bobby Firmino, too. Two goals. Almost got a hat trick. He had a couple that were close there in the box. Yeah, um, he, nice he to... looked his old self. Yeah, I, his old self really hasn't ever left, to be fair, I don't think. No, uh, he just isn't playing as much. Yeah, he just doesn't play as much. I don't think he has quite the engine he used to have, but... He yeah. still can come into big games and make an impact. And ultimately, Liverpool kind of, uh, you know, end that game. It just kind of ends on a soft little note that, um, you know, you've tied 3-3 at Anfield, but it doesn't really feel like it because you go on to the, the UCL semifinals and you know you're going to play Villarreal and you're the, you're the favorable result in that. Not to discredit Villarreal in any way, but um, I feel pretty confident going into that semifinal round and uh, you can't look past them, but you have to be pretty happy with that drawing. Mm-hmm. And it gives the potential for a Liverpool City UCL final, which I think would send all of us into the great abyss. I, Mitch, we can't watch. If that happens, I literally can't watch the game with you. That's your loss. It can't happen. That's your loss. You can go get your own Dunkin' Donuts. That's fair. Maybe you can. Well, well, I want to. I'd want to go for that, like I did last year, so I can spill another Heineken and cry when. Oh you... yeah, we could drink and watch the game. Anywho, um, let's talk about more City and Liverpool because that's yeah, all cause... fucking happening. Um, reruns, FA Cup semifinals, baby. Uh, Mitch, actually, give. Let's do. Let's have Mitch do give his Fiorentina forecast, and then we'll do get back into Liverpool City. Josh, you need the you need to keep the episode thing on the side the same order we have the goddamn notes. Yeah, that's right. not a logistics company, okay? I can't do I can't do this. I can't even give figure me out a, what box give, I'm trying give, to highlight give, here. Give give me my give me my cue. I, I haven't heard my cue music. Bre- breaking news. The violas are sunny and seventy five right now. Uh, a hot 3-2 win over Napoli this this past weekend. Uh, huge underdogs come out on top, grabbing a vital three points. 
taking on Vin- uh, Venezia this weekend. I'm thinking it's going to be a 3-1 Fiorentina win. Um, Viola are sitting in seventh place right now on 53 points with a game in hand. They're two points back of six, four points back of fifth. They do have a matchup against um, Roma on May 8th. So it's it's getting close to that uh, being the deciding match to see if our Viola's here on the main stand podcast because we are a Viola podcast. No, uh, you're a Viola podcast host. I do not want them to win a single game. Uh the boys are are looking confident. I uh, I'm feeling a sick a top six finish uh, on the horizon for sure. For sure, we're sunny right now. The boys are buzzing. We banged in three against Napoli. We're chilling. This uh, is a very accurate. This will tell you how I am currently feeling about your chances at the top six. Yeah, I've been shopping for Fiorentina Nintendo kits recently. <laughs> This is unrelated, but how sick of a res- uh, sponsor would Ribena be for Fiorentina? Okay, so is is James Milner their their director of marketing? I mean, James James Milner probably. If you said James Milner's going to Fiorentina for like his his uh you know swan final song. yeah swan song, I wouldn't be surprised. Like that's a he could fit into that team, give him some stability in the midfield. He could he could captain that side to a to a title. Imagine, we should start a campaign for that. Milner, him and Terrera, him and Terrera just running shit. Akone on the on the right wing. You could probably oh, bring Bobby set. Duncan back and have Milner uh, <laughs> show him the ropes. We can we can, oh you know what you know what we do we just loan them Mo Salah for for his his retirement tour as well. <laughs> just buy Fiorentina, make him our our second club. Why not? <laughs> Uh, all right, now we can talk about the FA Cup yes. semifinal here. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I, this is the game I feel like if City are going to lose a game, it's going to be this one, especially given the midweek results. Um, no De Bruyne, no Walker. I can see Zach Steffen starting this game. I can see Pep saying, fuck the FA Cup, honestly. I'm like, That's kind of where I'm at, too. Just like looking at the injuries and what else is on the table. I think having a Champions League semifinal and a Premier League to close out are far more important than the FA Cup at this point. Um, and you don't want to rip. We could beat you though. I would laugh pretty hard. It it would be pretty cool for you, wouldn't it? But I uh, no, I definitely see Pep playing a rotated side, and Stefan's been getting minutes in this tournament, right? This yeah, I can. His... I can see Stefan starting tonight or this weekend for us. So. I, I don't know. I think I definitely think the Atletico game and, and what happened in that match is definitely affecting what we're going to see this weekend for oh, sure. sure. Um, sure. It, is, it is going to be a completely different football match than what we saw this past Sunday. Yeah. 100% different. Interested for Pep's press conference tomorrow before the game just to see who is and isn't fit. Yeah, like we like me and Mitch said, um, you know, we have Man United in the midweek, so it's it's kind of interesting to see where Klopp goes with this as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't see him playing necessarily a fully rotated side, especially coming off of what we we yeah. just had. We we had a full rest from Virgil. We had Joel getting the legs running again after what two weeks off, a no, week and Joel, a half. Joel's off. been playing. It feels like he hasn't played in a he month. Played against City, so he had a week off. I don't think he. I don't think he was out. Honestly, I think Kanate uh, started both UCL games, which is probably what you're thinking of. So he had like uh, he wasn't playing like the midweek fixtures. And then fucking Joe Gomez playing on the in <laughs> playing the right back. It's dude. It's weird. It's weird what we're doing and what we've had to do with. Trent being out and playing Joe Gomez on the right is just messing me all all sorts of fucked up. But um, no, I think I think we play it as if we have a fully fit squad. I think we have a couple of pieces rotated, depending on situations that we've 
learned from this past weekend. Maybe throw Bobby in where he's kind of had the hot boot, you know, coming off two goals on the midweek. I would I would expect a couple of changes, but I wouldn't expect anything crazy, even with United on the midweek. I think we need to have our continued run of form with the guys that we've been, been running with. Suggestion, Mitch, uh, in the midfield, yeah. Oxlade Chamberlain. No, no, well, I I would no. like that actually. I think he uh, I think he could do quite well against City. I'd like to see him get a couple more games in. Um, the re the reason I say no is because it it is kind of like already his way out. He's it's it's not like he has that spot. And then like you're gonna put in you're gonna put in Ox when you could take away a spot from Curtis Jones or take away a spot from. Um, Tiago, Hendo, Fabinho. I'd rather Nabby. save them for United. I, I think Ox can. I, I don't know. We're not gonna. We're not gonna play six midfielders. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. Point of... I think he could get a spot in that team. I, I think some of those players you name, like Curtis Jones, you know, Harvey Elliott's another one. Still have some defensive deficiencies. I, I think Ox yep. could come in and do a job. I I know he probably won't stay at Liverpool. I don't think that's been a hundred percent decided, but no, it's no, looking no, no. Unlikely. But that's the way it's yeah, yeah, that's just the way it's leaning. So I wouldn't expect him to get minutes in the position that we're in, where it's not like it's not a necessity to put him in over somebody else. No, you know what I mean. I I could definitely see him coming off the bench early to give somebody a rest, maybe give somebody a half and half. But I don't I don't see him starting this game. Just an idea. I, I think we could. Yeah. Uh, I think we could use a little bit of more dribbling in the midfield, and Kaita does offer that a little bit. But Kaita man still scares the shit out of me sometimes with the, the way he, his passing is not good enough. No, it is he, not. He does not get enough on the ball, and that's not me being critical. I know Hendo is not the best passer. Some days, some days he's, he's very good, um, but he's just not at the level of like being first choice yet, and. I'd like to see someone that can come in and carry the ball a little bit in the midfield against City, and I think Chambo potentially could do that again. I don't think I don't think idea. you're I don't think you're wrong. Yeah, no, I don't think you're wrong, but I I do see him getting minutes where yeah. he hasn't recently. I do see him getting getting a spot uh, in maybe like a 60th minute substitution just to give somebody a rest going into the midweek where we don't need to mm -hmm. to waste the tank right now. I will say we'll, we'll dive right into my picks, and this can be the first game we talk about. Um, first week, we're doing the treble parlay. So three picks combined into one, um, and the treble parlay this week is the over 2.5 goals. Um, duh. They've scored like eight goals in the past two head-to-head -head matches. Uh, I have Solid a score. I think he breaks his duck against Man City. And then the Liverpool money line. Again, never going to not ride at the boys. Those three picks together are plus four hundred. Um, so you put a hundred dollar bet down, you get four hundred dollars in winnings. Um, so that's a big one. That's the treble parlay for this week. Um, pretty much can't lose there. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Might slap a guarantee on it. I don't know. Um, and the you're, other semi final is, yeah. is yeah, Chelsea yeah. Palace. Do you guys have a favorite in that one? Is Chelsea gonna to run away with it because it's their last pretty much chance to win silverware? Um, I like Palace, and I don't know why I like Palace, because Chelsea should be the favorite. Vieira's just got him playing some type of way, and Chelsea have slipped these past couple of weeks, so... Can Gallagher play? Yeah, I don't think you're cup-tied in domestic. He didn't play an FA Cup game for Chelsea this year. No, 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 but, uh, like, where they're a parent club. Uh, that's only in the Champions League, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm, I think he's fine to play. Well, that happens we can, sometimes We can get in, our like, fact league, checkers though, on that. Know? I feel like that's happened uh, a couple times with Liverpool players, no, Mitch? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of I, one. I can't, I can't he, remember a situation. He's unable to play. Nope, you guys are right. He can't play. Oh, no shit. Damn. Oh, they're fucked. I just thought of that when we were talking about it. I hadn't thought about that before, and it's like, damn, I wonder if Gallagher is a miss. Because that used to happen with, like, Harry Wilson and a couple other, like, loanies for Liverpool. And that just popped in my head. 
Ooh, without him, I don't favor Palace. <laughs> yeah. No, no they say yeah, so. I guess you can appeal to let your players play against your parent club. And in 2018, or in 1819, Chelsea let Mount and Tomori on loan at Derby play against them, yeah. but they told Palace no and aren't letting Gallagher. Play. I don't. I don't blame them. I, I, they know who he is. They know the talent. They Fucking... need that money. They need that cup. So <laughs> that. And they're pro and they're probably riding an, a little angry uh, after getting knocked out of the Champions League. So they could go out and try and just knock the wheels off this game. I, I think do like the potential of Palace. I don't know Zaha still probably my favorite player for like a non top six side if I had to pick one. Um, but my pick for this game is the over two point five. It's only minus one ten. It's pretty good odds in my opinion. Um even though they're minus, just because Chelsea have scored, like, what, nine goals in the past two games? Or, like Mitch said, they're coming into this game a little bit pissed off. Um, I like Palace's offense. Uh, odds on Edward has been class this season. Uh, the likes of Zaha, Eze. Um, yeah, this game feels like it's got goals in it, for yeah, sure. for sure. Um, and then I just have a couple other picks for the week, because it's kind of a shortened Premier League weekend. Um, don't want to give picks for next week, just because... I feel like it's unfair to give a pick for Liverpool United when Liverpool haven't played City. Obviously, a lot could change. Um, so, Brentford and Watford. That's an interesting game, kind of towards the mid, bottom of the table. Um, I have the Brentford money line. They beat West Ham last week and looked really, really good. Eriksson's coming into his own. You know, back in the goals a little bit. Ivan tony has been playing well. I'll rock with the Brentford money line. Plus 155. Huge plus odds uh, against Watford. Uh, I know they're not, you know, an incapable side, but I favor Brentford here. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes. then I, I'm going to do something I regret because I've rode Arsenal <laughs> so hard lately, and I've been getting yes. fucked the past couple games. But I'm going to take the Arsenal money line against Southampton minus 105. Um, I, I, they've had str- had struggles against Southampton in in recent years. I remember last year, I believe Walcott. I believe, scored a goal against them to win. Um, oh. But I do think Arsenal well bounce back. They have a little bit more grit and mentality than they have had in recent years. So I think they'll bounce back from you know these successive losses and put in a good showing. Um, so that's my pick for that one. And then I have – just let me change the boxes real quick. Again, not a logistics company. Never have been, never will be. Spurs and Brighton is the last kind of game I have picks for. I have two picks for this. Um, Again, the over 2.5 minus 115. Spurs have been just at it. Brighton have been as well, to be fair. So I have both teams to score, which kind of goes hand in hand with the over 2.5 pick. Um, And those odds are minus 115 and minus 110, respectively. So just a handful of picks this weekend. Um, I should have picks later in the weekend for... Uh, Bayer Leverkusen and RB Leipzig and then I'll probably put out another bet sheet for the the week Premier League games um, kind of after we get through the weekend and Pat I know that you had a a final segment here we did legends five aside for me last week and that's how we're going to cap off uh, this week's episode so Pat why don't you give us the rundown all right so we're going back to front like Josh did um, in goal, I've got a player uh, that is definition of the streets will never forget. Somebody who, as a kid, I loved going on YouTube and watching uh, goal compilations uh, scored by this gentleman, Rogerio Cini, goalkeeper for Sao Paulo for like 14 years. Uh, I believe he has 129 career goals. Um, just fucking awesome dude it's so cool over 100 goals as a goalkeeper that's banging and free kick i've never heard of this guy to be honest he's like 100 in goal he took the penalties and the free kick do yourself a favor and look him up after this kappa needs to get lessons from this guy wars bangers uh dope goalie dope goalie Uh, i have two defenders Oh, I'm interested uh, in this. I know one of them too, but I'm interested in it. 
one of them should have been ob like even more obvious than the one that you know. Um, one of my favorite players ever uh, gave me one of the greatest moments in the history of my club, uh, and that's Vincent Company, uh, Blue Forever. Love that man to fucking death. Uh, any team that I am picking, personal favorite legends, uh, Vincent Company is back there. Uh, adore him. Think he's one of the best Premier League center backs of all time. Um, and yeah, he, he has he a the obvious one. Reason no. Okay, well, he, he was should... the one I was thinking of. So, okay, the next one um, is, in my opinion, the greatest fullback of all time. Uh, the most decorated player in the history of the game, and it's Danny Alves. Uh, he's he's playing. He he's still technically playing. Uh, but I think he reinvented the modern fullback. Um, him and Philip Lom, I think, really did a number on what the fullback is expected to do in today's game. And uh, that combination play with Lionel Messi at prime Barcelona to, you know, his his days and like his mid-30s playing for Juve or PSG. Um, trophies are guaranteed wherever he goes, except for this current Barcelona side. Uh, but love Danny Alves. I think I, he's one of my favorite players of all time. And uh, that nutmeg he had on Ronaldo in 1L Classico uh, lives rent-free in my head. It's fucking awesome. Um, my one midfielder, also a Barcelona player. Um, one of my favorite players of all time as well. Um, very, very talented. He's in, in the debate for best midfielder ever. Uh, current Barcelona manager, Xavi. Um, I think when you look at all-time greats and you look at legends of the game and, and then you look at the midfield position it's like in the modern era there's like three or four names that really stand out and one of them is absolutely shabby um his ability to just like play a pass from anywhere on the pitch uh, is unbelievable he's a midfield maestro of his time uh yeah in my opinion the best like pure central midfielder um of our generation anyway uh i think he's a great player and he, one of the reasons one of one of the players that like really helped me um like fall in love with the sport was watching those like early barcelona teams and and seeing xavi and iniesta and busquets and i mean of course messi but yeah um and then finally up top uh this one is probably the most obvious of the entire fucking team uh it's, it's sergio aguero uh, my favorite player ever, best number nine in the history of the Premier League. Uh, I love him to death. Uh, 93-20 uh, is, is a moment that will forever be ingrained in, in my memory and, and, and in the history of Man City. Uh, top goal scorer for the club. Career ended super unfortunately due to heart complications, but you got to put your help first at the end of the day. And uh, what he did for City can't be overstated enough. Uh, his time with the Premier League, he was um, a terror to every single club for an entire decade uh i think his accolades just speak for himself uh he was guaranteed 20 goals every single year uh tied with Henri for uh, most consecutive 20 goal seasons it, endless records i could just sit here and list but uh it's my favorite player of all time so he's going in the starting five that's my legends five aside so i uh, just uh back to front one more time every name rogerio sini vincent company Danny Alves, Xavi Hernandez, and Sergio Aguero. I thought you were going to go with Iniesta in midfield, the way you were describing that. Could have been either or. Uh, I, I like – I'm a little more partial to Xavi yep. for whatever reason, but I, I almost went David Silva, but I didn't want there to be too many City players and two players that, you know, uh, were still actively playing, but – um. If Silva had retired, he would be there instead of uh, Xavi, and they would be three City players, and it would be there. David Silva is like my honorable mention. I, I think. Yeah. I can't speak highly enough about the little magician. Your side was very South American, Span Spanish, where mine was a little bit more European. So I'm excited to see where Mitch kind of takes us next week. Mitch is only um, going to be Central and Northern America. <laughs> three Canadians in his five. Alexi Lawless, is Dude. that you? Is that you <laughs> and my Tim Howard. Howard? That's fine. You can have Tim Howard if you pick Alexi Lawless. I'm leaving the Zoom call. Can I have Mia Ham? Sure. <laughs> Mia Ham's a, a G legend.
Mia the on the pod. She's married to yeah, Nomar. <laughs> All right. If you made it this far in the episode, <sighs> we appreciate you. I'm gonna stretch while I talk to you lovely people. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you sub, you ring the bell, you like, you comment. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever, just make sure you follow it. Download the episode, send it to a friend. Uh, Don't forget to banter with Pat in the DMs. Yeah, talk shit to me in the comments if I mispronounce the name or do whatever you need to do. I'll uh, don't say it to Mitch because he'll get upset. But you can just talk shit. Yeah, to I cry. I'm, I have a weak personality. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, appreciate you immensely. And uh, thanks for the, the wild ride. The next eight weeks are going to be really fun on this podcast. Kill us now. Deuce, Deuce out. Peace.